Welcome to Tea Time with Shaylee and Amber, the podcast where we talk about all the shit that your horse wants you to know and what you can do about it. Amber is a horse trainer and a personal results coach, certified in Theta and Semitic Breathwork. Shaylee is an animal communicator who also teaches communication. Both knowledge seekers with the intention of sharing that knowledge and hoping that we can encourage the listeners to do the same. Join us this week as we chat about our animals who have transitioned and are transitioning to the non-physical. The energy, emotions, and the physical pain we share together and where it comes from. A deep sense of wonder about the connectedness of all of it and just plain real talk. See you guys there. And as always, if you guys are interested in getting to dive a little bit deeper, then please click on the link and take a good hard look at our membership because it's amazing. Okay. See you guys in there. Hello everyone. And welcome back to the pod. If you missed our last pod, it was a little recap about the elements of connection clinic. Um, we'll try not to talk about it again today, but it was <laughs> like kind of life changing. So it's like a part <laughs> of our lives now. Um, if you want to hear about the clinic or some of the cool takeaways, you should totally check it out. We're also doing one in North Carolina in October. Um, there are a lot of applicants already signed up, but don't let that discourage you. You can totally wait. Can people still sign up for it? That's yeah. It, we'll put the link for the info, but the actual application process will start, I would say next week. So yeah, okay. we'll have to figure out how long we'll leave it open for. Um, but yeah, totally. You can sign up in the link that we'll put in the show notes for here. And then you'll be able to get the info on it, the specifics. And then in that email that you receive, you will also get the application. And that's how you can actually for really, for really sign up. After you read all the details, you decide, heck yeah, then that's when you send it on in. <laughs> Sweet, sweet. Well, if you're watching us on YouTube right now, you see the bags under our eyes and <laughs> how tired we look. You're hearing us. Hopefully, we still sound peppy for those of you that are trying to like commute to work or something and needing like a pick me up. But we are Not feeling be like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're feeling like we just kind of like want to stick to this commitment and show up for you guys no matter what and keeping it real always being our authentic selves and we've both had pretty gnarly like last two weeks um nothing too crazy nothing too crazy but um yeah anyway that's where we're at right now we don't even really know what we're going to talk about um i do feel like um it's important for us to talk about the connection between our horses and us and times that we're feeling a little bit blah because I have to put one of my horses down in a day, day and a half, day and a quarter. Um, and it's so interesting. I was just telling Amber, like right before this call, how like he got the diagnosis and we've like been going through the motions. I've done all the energy work for him. And he's like, okay when the date like he's like getting like increasingly more annoyed and like we've already gone through like the crying the tears the drinking a bottle of wine the all the things and like now he's just it's so interesting how like he's giving me so many signs and it was like the coolest thing yesterday a hawk like flew over us and the day before I had found a feather on the ground and I was like oh my gosh this is so cool I think this is a hawk feather and then a hawk flew over us when we were training in the arena and it was missing a feather that was cool um but I have all these things going on with my animals right now and I asked Amber before we got on this call I was like is it me giving it to them or them giving it to me <laughs> and apparently we've decided that that is the question <laughs> <laughs> oh. I would, when we talk about that part and I just go back to like what Tammy Billups talked about, if you guys aren't in our membership, we did a book club with Tammy Billups and she came on after we all read the book and we got to ask her questions and dive a little deeper. And she does talk about that energy exchange and the soul contracts and um, taking that stuff on for others. Um, and she does say that 
it is taken on what they take on is the stuff that we're not aware of most of the time. And we're so, uh, you know, that might be also false. I was gonna say, we're so aware of our stuff, but like maybe it's stuff that's deeper and we're not aware of it at all. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. And I feel like for the people that come to do like the work that we are currently doing in like a bigger way versus just personally working on it and having it affect your family. And when we're like openly talking about it and like sharing it and teaching it, it's like we need a bigger <laughs> animal team with us on this path and in this phase. Because if you think about the people that are in the space that we're at and how much growth is happening and also how much transition is happening, it's freaking wild. And it feels heavy, but it's also feels very in alignment with when they talk about, you know, um, once the lesson is learned, the animal transitions. Um, and it's just fascinating. All of it is very fascinating and exhausting. <laughs> Simultaneously. I know. It's so funny because I, well, not funny, but just interesting as I'm like, thinking of I'm like reflecting on like the last three years that I've had bro and like all the lessons I've learned like I've changed my style of training and I have really I feel like he paved the way for my horse Biggie so I got Biggie and I haven't really done anything with him because I'm like rejecting his love for some reason like and uh, my friends always come over and they're like, Biggie's so beautiful. He's this, he's that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's, he's all right. Like he's here. I know that he's well taken care of, but like, I don't know why I'm like rejecting this like connection that he tries to have with me. And I'm like, I have everything I need, like in my other two horses. Like, I don't really, I, I didn't really, um, let's get real you guys. Okay. I didn't want him in the first place, but I, decided that I was going to take him because something told me to, well, because Dover sent me a million fucking flamingos and was like, this is the next <laughs> horse that you need. Okay. So I went to get this horse and then I was like angry that I had this horse and like, he is beautiful and amazing. Don't get me wrong. If you met him, you would love him, but I'm in like this weird phase of like, or I was, okay. I'm coming out of this right now that bro is leaving. And I only learned this in the last couple of days where bro really taught me to love a horse for like, like I loved him for who he was, regardless of like what his body could do. Like I haven't ridden him in two years because of like the physical stuff that he has going on. And I still, he's like my absolute favorite one to be around. And like, I was just able to really like love and appreciate like who he was, what he did for the herd, like what he did for me, knowing that he had a safe home. And I feel I feel like part of his lesson for me was really accepting that like I could love horses and I do have a deep love for horses regardless of like what they can do for me because when I got Biggie I was like okay yeah I'll get him as like a trail horse or whatever and, and then when that didn't happen I immediately like rejected him and I was like nope nope you're not a riding horse I have two horses that have the potential to be ridden if they wanted to like you know, you're just a little pasture puff. And I don't know why I was like that. I'm like, oh my gosh, Shaylee, like you're this animal communicator that's like spreading love and light over here and then shitting all over your own horse. But I, look, I'm human. I can't help it. <laughs> and I feel like bro. And then just recently, like I've been taking lessons with Lockie and like Biggie's so much fun to lesson with. And like, I'm slowly coming around to like appreciating him for who he is. Cause he triggers all my buttons. Like he's pushy. He, you know, it's just all the things that I don't like a horse. Like he does all of those things. And it's so <laughs> weird navigating that. And now I'm finding my appreciation for him. And I just realized this the other day, like I finally gotten to the point where like, I really do love him for who he is. And now bro's like, all right, peace out. Like my mission's done. Congrats. Like, and when I think of the, the synchronization and the dates, it's crazy. Cause like, I got bro and then Dover, who was like my solid citizen, he died like a year later on the day. And then mm -hmm. I got Biggie and through him. And now like bro, bro's vet appointment where I made the decision, like we need to let him go was the day I got Biggie. So it's like all these synchronizations are happening where it's like, all right, we're, we're passing off, we're passing off the torch now. 
And I did this gnarly, um, I wasn't doing a soul fragment retrieval, but I was doing like a visualization communication with my horses to show them like what was going to happen to bro. Like I just wanted them to know like exactly. So I, I connected to each individual horse, showed them from their eyes. Like we're walking him out this barn. This is what the vet looks like. We're turning right. We're going down the hill. This is where his body is going to be. He's not going to smell right. Cause we're putting him down like artificially. Um, and so they all went through their own grieving process, but the weirdest thing happened with Biggie where I like walked him down to see the body and he like laid down next to him and like put his forehead against his and all of this blue energy just came out of bro and went into Biggie. And I was like, holy crap. And then he just got up and like walked away and I was like, whoa, that is insane. So lots of big lessons happening for me right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That is interesting with the synchronistic number thing, because my first time becoming aware of anything in the realm of animals transitioning once the lesson has been really integrated and that there was even a lesson that they bring to you was when we helped sugar and I had a session with Nikki. We should have Nikki on. I had a session with Nikki and she's, um, I want to say she's like, almost like a death doula for animals and because it, it made the process. So like, that is what we did, right? We just, she explained that to me and then pulled the lessons in. But the crazy thing is after I did do a podcast with her after, cause I was like, this is wild ass. People need to know about this stuff. Um, that was when I was a baby and I was learning <laughs> and, um, and I started to realize the synchronous synchronicity of the dates and what actually her being that sick showed me about somebody who I was in a relationship with, how they were not going to show up. And that was a very clear message before that. And then also simultaneously, she ended up with epilepsy, which was, I can handle a lot of things. Like I can witness a lot of emergencies and, and I handle myself really well. Like I can think through it. I do the things well my dad died of epilepsy and he had a seizure before he fell off the dock and he drowned. And my dog having seizures triggered me like nothing I have ever experienced in, I have experienced a lot of things, but that for me was just like, I couldn't think straight. I was like anxiety attacks, full, like freak out. And I was like, Oh, and, and also realized like three days later that it was the same. I can't remember if it was the day he died or his birthday that we actually helped her finally transition on. So it was really crazy. I have to listen back to that podcast, but it is interesting. It was very interesting how it just like gives you validation that like you're on the right track. You know what I mean? Cause we were talking before we got on here, even I feel like a lot of us have had to help our animals. Um, this year or in the last year, I guess not even just this year, but last year too. And how it was such a interesting process to go through it over several days, knowing that's what needed to happen. And then just trusting because Thunder wasn't necessarily showing like these huge signs and the vet was really advocating to keep him here and try steroids and try a few other things. And I was just like 100%. He told me two weeks before that. And then he told me two days before that, like, I don't, I want to, I want to go with dignity. I don't want to go. I don't want this to get worse. And, it, and so in those moments, it's when we talk about taking your power back and advocating for your animal and trusting yourself, the huge thing with the bird and the, I've already talked about on other episodes with the feathers and the, even in the last, when I was preparing for that mirror session before Lockie came and the little feather from that same damn bird, when he, the day, the weekend that he yeah. helped him. And it's always the, the thing is always trust yourself. And I know that that's what he was, that core lesson was, you know, for me. And when I finally was like, it is time for sure. Aziz, get out here. I'm not doing this anymore. And it felt really good. And it felt really like exactly how it was supposed to, you know what I mean? So the lessons are really kind of gnarly, <laughs> but you know, 
crazy too is like the lessons are not just I used to think that they just had like a core lesson for us like when I would do my readings I'd be like oh his core lesson for you is patience or it's this or it's that or it's in and now like the more I'm growing the more I like learn from you and like look into this theta stuff it's like so crazy how I'm like now I'm like okay this is their lesson for you now but like within your experience together they might have like five or ten lessons that are like all accumulated and it's all tied back into like this one core lesson but there's multiple little things all along the way and that's what's so crazy to me is like to look in hindsight and be like wow there's so many like synchronicities and um I think the feathers are super cool And like, if, if you guys listening, if you're, if you're in that spot where like you have an animal that you are helping transition, or you don't know if it's the right time, or, you know, you're just struggling with that, you can ask them for signs. Like they will send you every single sign. Like if you're like, I need a sign every single day that this is right. Like that's, that's what you can ask them and they will send it to you. And like, that's how it's been with bro. Like when they took the radiographs of his neck after every single shot, he looked back like after every single one and was like, you're going to tell her, right? Like you're going to tell her how bad this is. And then like, we went down to his grave site and this little, I knew that my, like my dog was going to like be waiting for him. And she was like this little tan dog. She's buried down there. And this little tan butterfly, like was just like circling him all over the place. And I actually showed Lindsay the grave last night, his old owner. She came by to to see him and drink a beer with him because he loves beer and whiskey, (laughs) (laughs) like his mom. (laughs) Um, And uh, that little butterfly was there again. And then that hawk that flew over us. And then we had, I had Julia come out to take pictures or Celeste flew her out to me. And we stayed at a hotel and we get to the address and it was like 222 street or whatever I saw 222 like every single day since this like appointment so they will show you signs and then you can even ask for like signier signs if you need them Mm -hmm. like immediately after I was a little bit worried about it and I was like I need a signier sign and he like was tripping all over himself and just showing me like very clear like things so yeah they will always give you a sign if you ask for it (laughs) you know what's too is that um obviously we didn't plan any of these dates or think about them really like it's like looking in hindsight right where I'm like oh this date's familiar and Arlo um I Arlo is my German shepherd and we know that she like like had that situation where she almost died she and Rocco had their little you know (laughs) their little souls going through a little whatever and um but she's turning a year old this month and I was like oh I wonder what when it is because Julia was here and she was telling me that her birthday is at the end of the month and I was like maybe Arlo shares a birthday with you and I like look up what the breeder told me and it's freaking June 23rd which is the day we're putting bro down I'm like wow of course it is (laughs) yeah that's that's wild um the signier signs the signier signs Mm hmm. So what Amber and I were kind of thinking, too, because I well, let me tell you guys some communication stories and then maybe let me tell you some stories and then that are fresh on my mind and then we can decide if it's the person or the horse. <laughs> um. So I talked to this horse recently who um had like a ton of tension in his jaw. I think I told you about this horse, actually. He had like a ton of tension in his jaw. And he described it to me as someone grinding their teeth. And he was like, but it's energetic. Like, I feel it within my head. It's almost like I'm grinding my teeth, but I'm not. And the person was like, oh, well, I wear a mouth guard at night because I grind my teeth. So that's one example. I talked to another horse recently that um, almost died. He had, he got completely, she called, she said irritable bowel syndrome, anorexia, Um, and she said one other thing. And when I talked to him, I was like, yes, he lost a lot of weight, but he's showing me, um, water in, in replacement for nutrients. And he showed me, um, anemia. And she told me that she had an eating disorder and that she was anemic. And what was so incredibly like powerful about that session is that, that, her heart was still tied to this other horse and 
this other horse didn't get to like carry forward the lessons for her and transferred his lessons into her current horse. Mm -hmm. And this current horse was like, like I basically had to almost die for you to realize like the power within you. Cause she like gathered all her strength to, to like help him out. And he was like, I will let go of these lessons. If you will start like like taking your vitamins and like he, he was adamant on her, like bringing more nutrition into her body. But it was so interesting to me how strongly he carried that. And like that came like these two instances feel to me like they came from the person, right? Like the horse probably didn't have that tension before the girl was grinding her teeth and they came into experience to heal together. And then this horse with like the, the malnutrition he, he was healthy. And then her other horse passed away and he became lonely and she lost a. He told her you died with him that day. And I was like, Oh my God, that is so sad. Like he was really important to her. And so this horse like took on those lessons. And the more I think about it, cause like sometimes my animals will send me stuff like how Biggie gave me that cellulitis that one time or how like my dog gave me like um itchy gums when he had like a <laughs> issue in his mouth but it's always like short-lived and never a big like it's almost like something like I feel like when it comes from them it's short you almost recognize it right away or it comes to fruition very quickly because they are always in that like allowing phase. So like you get, they ask, then they put themselves in a state of allowing and you, we figure it out versus with us. It's like we ask and then we resist, 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 and then things build up and they continually take them on until it becomes like a bigger thing. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the bigger, more chronic things probably come from us and the little acute things might be their own. How do you yeah. feel about all that? Because I think about... I think about like when I go into sessions with people like this last weekend, I did a clinic. This clinic was not what I expected. Um, <laughs> interesting though, how I got forced into doing it this way by the weather. <laughs> uh, there was eight people signed up and originally I was taking my horses up there because there's lots of place to ride. And I was going to do a morning session. It was going to be two people at a time, or I could do everyone for a few hours. And then we did the day before just the people and the arena that we were going to stay at and the property we were going to stay at got super wet. Like there's been thunderstorms and still happening. And so it wasn't ready, but she's like, we can go to a different barn up the street and they have a smaller area, but it was more like a big round pen. And, um, and so 50% of me going up there was like having my horses there and having them outside of the window and then getting on and riding. So I was like, okay, I'll just leave my horses at home. Cause I don't want to cancel since we had an arena. It's fine. So I was like, well, I'll just dedicate my whole day to just teaching. And so I had to do one person at a time because of the space. And it got so intense, so fast. Like I videoed each one of the sessions for the people. But when I think about it would have never escalated, it would have never escalated to that level had we all been together, but it was interesting how that happened. And when I get into the space with somebody, I immediately can tap into where there is congestion, like in their body. And so that doesn't stay with me though. You know what I mean? Like I feel it and then it goes. And so with each person, I knew where I was at that day so I could separate the two. And even though I did at eight, no, it was seven because someone couldn't get their horse in the trailer. So I had to do it the next day. Seven people in a row was like, it would clear in between. It wasn't like it stayed. And even when I did connect with it, it didn't stay there. You know what I mean? It, it was like, I knew it. And then I talked about it and then it was and then it, we would just go on. So that does feel like what would indicate this isn't mine. You know what I mean? But also if you're, these are people I haven't met, or I mean, a couple I've met before, but it's like, there's no real like buy-in <laughs> on the relationship. You know what I mean? There's no like guilt and <laughs> like, 
giving and receiving and all the things. But I will tell you that when you talked about how, you know, him bringing forward the lesson of trying, trying to just, well, I guess it was the lesson of accepting them for who they are, but the receiving part, I went on like a whole rant because I was like, oh my gosh, we talked a little bit about it at the elements of connection. And then I started realizing how I was so clogged up in that area and every single person that I talked to almost this last weekend, there was just this underlying theme of feeling guilty about receiving. And like, all we're trying to do is embody how we want the horse to be. Right. So I think about like, if you're talking about Celesta, like someone had posted in my group, like my horse is in pillar one and all the things. And I was like, are you physically asking them to be in pillar one? And like, well, I could use a cookie and get it. And I was like, but like, what happens if you get them in pillar one without touching them? And they were like, what is it? What? And I was like, you have to go into pillar one. You have to go there. And then it's interesting to feel how resistant people are to that, where it's like, it's not safe, or there's so many beliefs stuffed in and around us being in that receiving space and people so people don't really even know they don't expect it they don't expect that they don't believe they deserve it they don't expect it to ever happen so why would I disappoint myself why would I even ask when I don't think it's going to happen like so many things around that um and so yes the receiving thing was so big but that's not what we were talking about. I just got like sidetracked because I thought about that theme. Oh, well, that's but. so interesting how you were like that. Why would I even try? I don't believe that would happen because I feel like horses say that in my sessions all the time. They'll be like, if I can't get it right, or if I don't understand what it is, and I know that I'm going to have the right answer, I just don't even want to do it. I wonder if mm-hmm. that comes from people then. I feel like it's a theme that was coming through a lot, like in my head in horsemanship trainer land, I was going to go do a normal clinic. Okay. Okay. I was going to go teach people about boundaries and give them some groundwork exercises. And like first horses, they all were a little bit pushy and I pushy in the way that it's like, they need to be right here to feel okay. So they're all been hauled in. They don't have time to settle because they didn't stay there. So it was like, we're getting all of the stuff, which is perfect because sometimes when horses have time to chill, they're like, well, it's fine now because he's calm, but when he's not, so it was good that we were having horses come in and out. And, and so I'm thinking, oh yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So the first session I'm like walking and we're talking about the space. We're talking about the boundaries and, um, and it was like, all of them had the wanting to be sort of right on top of you And when I had asked about creating that space, having that boundary be respected, it did come down to a lot of people. Well, in my life, you know, typically, you know, we have the kids and, you know, I have my husband, but he's just a man. So I won't, I won't expect him to show up for me like that. And I'm like, wait a minute. Why are we, why are we accepting this shit? Um, And I'm not judging because I spent my entire life in relationships where like, It was all out of whack, right? But it's interesting when you're in it, you just don't expect. And so when it went to asking and creating the boundary, it was almost like in the beginning when I I give people like a a rope or like a dressage whip or like a flag and I have them, I want you to ask this, you smacking this whip on the ground is a representation of you taking up space and asking for what you need. And I literally, that's all you have to say. And you can watch how people feel about that. A lot of people just come with their, you know, it's like you can feel, I mean, you can feel it if you're uh, empathetic in that way, but you can see the body language where people ask, it's funny, they ask just from their like elbow down, you know, or, and I always tell people, it's not the actual exercise I'm giving you. It's how you feel about it. So if you feel a fucking way about boundaries, it doesn't matter what I tell you to do. You can beat that horse with a big ass, you know, a big board in between the two of you, like it's not, they're not going to understand because it's too muddied up. And, um, and so it was interesting to watch me, you know, ask them take up space now in body. And it was like, well, I know, but like, it's still. And so then I ended up taking people through a meditation 
And I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> Sit down. So I sort of worked with the horse around them while they sat in the middle of the mounting block. And I got a lot of information from the horses um, about what, where we needed to go. And then I was like, it was Shaley was here. <laughs> and they all listened <laughs> to the podcast, by the way. And they, they were like, oh my God, the pod. And I'm like, oh my gosh, so funny. And I, the very first one, I'm like, okay, we're up in the light. I anchored in a word, did it. I'm like, okay, we're going to go find the waterfall and rinse off. And it was like soul fragments. And I was like, no. well, that is really just going way off into the woo woods right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, but it was, you know, I was like, okay. And I did that. And I did it with like probably four or five of the horses and the people. And it was wild to watch the horses in real time and have people witness it. Cause they could see like the responses of the horses were like, crazy where horses would be totally distracted because some of them I just unhooked and let them do like a little mini mirror session with their person and some of them totally distracted and the moment you started they were like oh hey and come right over totally change everything that was going on it was crazy it was crazy we talked to a woman's you know late husband I'm we went we went all out at this clinic um but yeah that theme was well, why would I ask for it? Cause I don't, you know, it's, it's easier to just stay where we are. I had a session today with somebody and that came up where it was like, I could just stay comfortable. You know, it feels uncomfortable to go there. Like every, not, things aren't that bad. You know, why would I rock the boat if it's not going to turn out well, I've had to have those conversations about my boundaries and it was super uncomfortable. And what I had said was, we have these animals that are indicating to us that there is some, an invitation of finding your worthiness around that, creating space, taking up space and asking for what you need and want to keep you safe and happy. I was like, but if you don't have those animals in your life, your body starts to do it. So you're not getting out of it. <laughs> you might as well learn it with the horses, but that that idea of, well, I'm just going to, you know, whatever, I'm not going to rock the boat. It's, it's not that bad. Your body, I think will eventually be the thing that pushes you out of that comfort zone. If you ignore the horses and don't take that route, like, it's not like you're getting out of anything by not addressing the uncomfortable stuff. Like once you know, it's just too late. <laughs> I feel called out right now, actually, because <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, this is me. Like how it's like, oh, it's too e it's easy to like stay here in this space. That is literally me and Biggie right now. We're like, I'm just like, oh, well, I'm not going to try to work on his body or I'm not going to do work with him because like, it's just easier if I just bring him in, feed him and turn him back <laughs> out. It's just easier if I like give him alfalfa while I'm trimming his feet or like have Justin feed him like Timothy pellets. And like, it's so interesting because I had a lesson the other day and Lockie was like, Oh my gosh, you're so curled in. And Celeste says it to me too. Everybody says that your shoulders are so curled in. And I'm like, yeah, it's so interesting. Like it's painful for me to bring my shoulders back. It's just easier for me to be like curled in. <laughs> and like, <laughs> that's literally what I say. I'm all it's so much easier for me. And then I'm like looking at my horses and like looking at how um, Tip is because he's like the one that I've had the longest and he literally is like so curled in. He has a collapsed thoracic sling. He's my only one that I can't get to like actually lift through the sling and like start to engage like his muscles. He like falls apart in the summer with the bugs. I freaking fall apart with the bugs. And I feel like we both just like become this like hot melting mess. And I just like, I always say, oh, he's just getting the summer off. And now I'm thinking like, oh yeah, because I don't want to do the work because it's just easier to give him the summer <laughs> off. So now I'm like, shit, I'm called out. I have some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's like important for like the entire everyone to know that like I think that's like everybody and I think that's why it resonated so many people at the clinic and even when we were just talking about my little situation with my horse and me and how we're and he's the one that's been through the been with me the longest right and so it's like trying to remain in a place where you're 
open and not guilty, but grateful for them coming on this path with you and like showing it to you and not being like, oh no, what can I do to take this discomfort away from you when it's like, you have to go through the stuff so that it can unravel for both of us. Um, and they're glad to do it. Like, that's what you told me. <laughs> yeah, they are. I know. They totally are glad to do it. And I've been like talking to some gnarly, well, not gnarly horses, but talking to horses with gnarly stories. Like ever since the clinic, it just like cracked me wide open. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's all these like lessons for these people. And they're all like really deep, like very valid lessons. And the horses are just like, it is what it is. Like I'm going with the flow and like, you can figure it out in your own time. And I'm even thinking about, I had like a one-on-one with someone last night. She's a, a communicator. She already has an active business and everything. And we used Biggie to practice on because she was wanting to get better at the physical body. And she was drawn like right to his left shoulder and was like, um, and I was like, okay, like, tr- like guiding her, like, okay, how do you feel about it? And she's like, well, yeah, it feels like it's coming from the shoulder and like maybe a little bit of his heart space and like, um, some of it coming from his past, but some of it's still here. And then she like went down to the foot and got like, and I was trying to like guide her to the foot because that's what I thought that she needed to pick up on because he had a keratoma removed from that foot. But then I'm like thinking as like, this just dawned on me. Cause I was telling Amber this story right before we started the pod that I was like, oh yeah, trying to guide her to like get this deeper message from the foot. But I literally like have had, I think like thoracic outlet syndrome in my shoulder for a long time because my ring finger and my pinky are numb. (laughs) And like, I can't like lay on my arm. I can't lay on it and I can't twist. Like I can't do certain positions. I just joined like this joint mobility membership because like literally I have like not a lot of motion in my shoulder joint. And, um, Catherine was sitting behind me when Amber was taking us to the airport after the clinic. And she's like, did, do you have trauma to your left side? Like what's going on with your left side? And I'm like, Oh, I don't know. Um, and oh my gosh, this is all, I have to tell you guys everything now. So many things are coming to me. Um, so, okay. So there's the shoulder, right. And then, um, you helped me realize that I needed the, I believe you message from the clinic. So like, just knowing that, like what I say someone would believe it, like just without question. But then I realized why I love taking lessons with Lockie so much because he literally like with everything, if it's the horse saying it or me, the first thing that comes out of his mouth is I believe you. That's like what he always says. He's always like, I believe you. I believe you. And we were like doing the shoulder thing. And he got me, he's like the first trainer who's been able to get like my shoulders all the way back for like multiple circles. And I didn't really collapse that much again in the session and it I I swear it's because he literally the whole time was like yep I believe you oh I believe him I believe that (laughs) just came to me right now it's so crazy how things are connected (laughs) I know it's crazy and it's like if you don't have these conversations with people and you have like a place to like talk about it and like process these like experiences and stuff like do you it takes much longer. I feel like that's why I like the membership, and that's why I like when we have our meetups once a me- um once a month because I feel like what does and is lacking in the horse community are people that are doing like this work at that level. And so to try to have this kind of conversation <laughs> with somebody like at your barn is probably gonna weird them out or totally confuse them <laughs> uh, or who knows, but. Um, but yeah, the body's crazy and the horses are crazy good at what they do. And what, what we're saying about, I think I've said it several times in the last, like maybe month or two to you and I, maybe other people where I've been like, I just need like four or five days off the leg like, train <laughs> of like questioning and like thinking about it and processing I was like I need to go to like an island and just drink cocktails for like a week straight and not think about anything and then come back like okay <laughs> like ready and then I was like I think they call that a vacation I don't know I don't know but I think that's what that is 
and my vacations tend to involve like working horses and then and then vacationing which is not at all a vacation but it's it is hard and it's heavy work and it's uncomfortable work but in between honestly I feel like there's so much service for people around that are like learning and so it's fulfilling so it keeps you not wanting to stop. And then also then very, very, very hundred percent knowing that like, if you don't, it just gets bigger and not better. <laughs> so you might as well just stay on the train and schedule a vacation. <laughs> I know. I saw this video the other day on Instagram and the lady was all, um, okay. I'm a little bit confused because some people say, life is short, seize the moment, go out there, don't wait for anything. And then you have these people that are like, enjoy the flowers, life is a journey, calm down and just meditate. And she's like, which one is it? I have whiplash. <laughs> oh my God, that's so true. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So funny. Oh. Well, you guys, tell us your stories. Tell us what you're going through right now. Does anybody else have any animals that are transitioning? Are you guys going through the shit? Because we're here for you. We're <laughs> especially here for you. Like, if you really need to talk about it, join the membership because that's where that stuff can totally come out in a safe space with a safe community. It's really cool in there. Um, but yeah, let us know where we're at. We're here for you. I feel like there was like one other thing that was going to come out, but I can't remember what it was. Must not be that important because it's gone now. So I'm not going to worry about it. Mm -hmm. That was a, like a meaty little podcast around knowing what we were going to talk about. I know. <laughs> That's I like part. that it's, it's not you, it's me, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, so I think what, like the general census around that feels like Spending that, oh, here we go again with the daily practice. Even if it's a few minutes, just like, where am I at? What is my body like without doing like a cord cutting meditation, you know, like, like hygiene, energetic hygiene, like once a week, you know, if you can't do it once a day, do it once a week and just know where you're actually at, where your body is and where it isn't, where it begins and where it ends. And then when you do enter into a space where you get like a wave of like, oh, weird, where did that come from? Just know it's probably not you. Oh, too many questions. I just like, wait a minute. So do we take, do we like take stuff on though for them? Like, I know, like I feel it, right? Like I, I, I can tap into it and feel it like we were talking about, but if we're, I like the horses will take, like, take our stuff on, you know what I mean? Like take it for us sometimes or the animals yeah. will, but do we do that? Like, okay. As soon as you asked that, I got this like image, this little download of like, no, we don't take things on. They just like reflect it like back to us. So like, if we think about animals, okay. If we think about life in general, <laughs> based on our belief systems with like Abraham Hicks. So like we are all energy, right? And there's a broader part of us that is non-physical energy because energy cannot be created or destroyed. So there is a piece of us that is still connected to like infinite intelligence, God, non-physical, whatever you want to call it. Animals, because they have, they don't have the complexities of mind that we do they stay in that state of allowing they have less like resistance towards life and they kind of go with the flow. So like, if you thought about a horse out in the wild, they might have like a crack in their foot or whatever, but they continue going. Like there's a reason why they can like, like they compartmentalize, they do their thing, but it's not like they're sending like that pain to each other. Mm -hmm. But like with us, I feel like when they have to live in these, like, even living in our houses, like in an ungrounded environment, like our dogs and our cats and stuff. Like, I feel like mostly they just absorb like, which is so, it makes me feel almost egotistical to think like, oh, these animals came to like serve us little servants that we're like putting our energy into. That's but I think that like, shit again. I know, I know. And then I think whenever we like, I don't think that we take things off 
on for them, but they will reflect something that they're feeling as a result of something that we put on them. So like, let's say, so like with Sage, um, she has a luxating patella and her left knee is really bad. And like, she's been limping for oh, like for like the last couple of days right now. And I like, had knee pain the other day and I just felt like that was a reflection of like hey you're putting this shit on me right now like can you figure this out so my leg can go back to normal Mm -hmm. that is almost what I feel and I actually had a session with someone that same person that talked to Biggie she talked to my friend Donna's horse and she was like I see her like looking at herself in the mirror and it's just like I'm so pretty if I had a mirror I would look in it all day like I just love the way I look I love the way I feel And like, I'm teaching my person to, to like, feel that way too. And so I thought it was so interesting because her person right now, like knowing her as, as like her friend is going through like this phase where like, she's not super happy where she is in for multiple reasons. And so it was interesting to hear that that horse showed like an actual mirror and was like, this is what like, I'm trying to bring to fruition for you. So I almost feel like when we do say that there are mirrors or whatever, they are literally like totally reflecting what we're putting on them and they're waiting for the time that we are in the receptive mode because animals tell me all the time that they we what we can only hear here's the hand puppet amber's hand puppet um (laughs) the animals tell me that they can only give us what we're ready for what we're ready to hear and what we can understand And, um, and then even in religion, not to get religious, but like people will say that about God, like you will only get what you can handle. So I think when it comes to our animals, we don't want all the lessons all at once. We can't handle all the lessons all at once, but when we're in a space in our life where like we can handle, you know, like the thing that happened with thunder, the thing that happened simultaneously with us, with our dogs and the tetanus and like all they're like reflecting these things back to us in a moment where they're like, okay, this is what needs to be addressed now. So we can move on to the next thing. Mm. Yeah. That's wild. I know. (sighs) We only thought we were ending. We have so much more to talk about. (laughs) I was like, oh man, could definitely keep going. Yeah. That's crazy. And then, yeah, all of it. Well, we should what time is it oh we should probably stop this has been a longish episode go us i know thanks for hanging out with us dudes and dudettes yep 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 um as always if you guys want ooh, if you guys want to join the membership and go deeper did i do that well did i do no. that hold on i'm going to talk about why are you leaving you didn't want to edit now you're gonna have to edit. I'm not gonna edit it out. Is this backwards? Oh no, it's not. Oh. I can see it. Backwards for me. <laughs> um, that we are starting this book in our next book club, and it actually has multiple authors. So I think that our next meetup with the author will have multiple people, which is gonna be freaking cool. Is that what we said we were gonna try to do? Get a couple of them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so if you guys are interested in diving deeper in that, that book is gnarly. I read like two pages and I was like, oh, I better wait. <laughs> All things are a little heavier right now. I'm gonna so we'll probably give everyone like a little while to read it. We haven't we set the book out, people are buying it, and um we give it's not a rush thing. I think we gave a good chunk of time last time and everyone got it taken care of and read and the meeting was really cool. So we're going to do that again. So if you guys want to do that with us, then um, join the membership. I'll put the link in the show notes and we have the little workshop. We don't know if it's a workshop or if it's a 30 day, like challengey thing yet, but it's brewing and it's going to be good. So um, that's also going to be available, the live version to the members. So if you want to be a part of that, I don't know. Um, I was going to throw out a couple of the ideas that we sort of had had. Um, Something about taking your power back, barn boundaries. Um, There was another one that I was like, oh, 30 days of getting into your receiving mode. Like, I thought that was fun. Um, All the things that are swirling around. So a lot of things cooking in there. And we have a lot of guests 
that come in. Um, and then you guys get to be a part of those calls while we're doing the podcast. If you have questions pop up, you can throw them in the comments and then we'll ask. So it's pretty interactive. And we're done. <laughs> Thank See you later. <laughs> oh, and a, a couple of the people at the clinic that I was just at said that we're supposed to ask you guys to review the pod. I don't know what that means. I'm, I'll get better. I'm going to hire someone to do this part. You need to like it. You need to share it. You need to, con you need to review it, apparently. So review it. Thanks. I don't know how you do that. But if you love us, you'll figure it out. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>